Hello everyone, this is Robert from Inkish. We're in our conversation with Toby Weiss, who is the Chief Operating Officer for the Fiery Division of EFI. Toby, thank you so much for coming and joining us in this conversation. Thanks to coming to EFI Connect, Robert. It's great to be here with you. Yeah, well, let's talk about that for a second. Isn't it fun to be out and talking with people again after all this COVID isolation? There is an energy that I think I've really missed. I've been talking to a lot of people and everyone else has missed it too, and that's just that personal connection. I uh, realized how much I gain from body language and, and physically being with people. It's really great to be uh, in front of people and customers and partners and staff again. Right, so the move from uh, Zoom meetings and things of that nature, um, while they were convenient and really bridged the gap, um, you feel that, uh, that that's evolved to the point where it's time to get back to talking to people directly. I think they both have a place. There was probably an enormous amount of business travel before that was unnecessary. And we've all shown that we could easily hop on a Zoom regardless of where you are in the world and accomplish something in a short amount of time. With that said, new relationships in particular, I think are very difficult to develop over, over that way. And, and in that sense, it's just great to run into you know, customers that I haven't seen in a long time or cultivate new relationships. So yeah, I think it, obviously it, it'd be great to be back with everyone more often. Well, that, and that speaks to something because one of the things that have, uh, has come up in, a, in probably one of the more important ways is how people do their work-life balance. There's some jobs that just simply require people to be in a team environment where, they're, where they are uh, physically close to each other. But there's a lot of others that I think a lot of people have discovered uh, can be done remotely, which opens up maybe to have more people that would come in uh, from areas that otherwise might not consider moving to a specific location. Have you had any experiences with this, uh, with the teams that you have? It runs the gamut, Robert. Uh, I think what you find is some people, um, they have jobs that they need to be in the office. You know, they might work on electronics or they might work on color management or they're working on equipment. And so they need to be there with their equipment. Uh, other people work in teams where they really do want to collaborate, jump up to a whiteboard, be together. I think you have people who naturally want to be with the rest of their team, but conversely, you have people who really are enjoying the remote work and aren't missing their commute at all and really feel like they can be very, very productive remotely. A lot of that I find are the content makers, the people who just want to you know, put on the headphones, be in a, a, a cone of silence, and produce either their white paper or their marketing material or their graphics and, and do that. And so I think what we all learned is the new normal going forward is going to have a mix of things. It's going to be a lot more remote than it was before, but it's still going to be a, a place for in-person, and there's going to be a lot of people who, who want that. Do you think this changes the kind of person that you would look for as an employee that you might be a little more open to somebody who's like that, whereas before you know, they necessarily sat in an office? Absolutely, I can tell you firsthand, I was someone who very, very deeply believed everybody needs to be co-located, uh, we all should be together, that's the fastest way to get to market, that's the fastest way to communicate. I myself am a get up from my desk and walk around uh, the hallways type of manager, that's my playbook. Uh, and I've changed. I've realized that uh, you know we, I can deal with someone who's remotely. They're not going to be left out, uh, you know, from the conversation. And absolutely, it it changes, you know, who we work, how we work, and and the collaboration we have. Well, that's interesting, and it, it and certainly that addresses what the uh, individual workers like. How has it changed your life? How's your work-life balance um, altered from uh, what it was uh, two years ago? I think. It seems like it should be more balanced because I don't have the long commute and I'm not going in, but what I found, and, and I've spoken to a lot of people who have the same uh, feelings, is that it can easily get out of balance because we don't have boundaries. When I'm at home, the computer is just always you know, a couple of feet away from me or in the next room, and it's very easy to you know, get on a Teams call with another country at all hours of night, to start work a lot earlier, to be thinking about work. I think there was this natural transition before where I woke up in the morning, I might have checked email, and I drove into the office, and, and that was work time. And I, I kept all my personal stuff out of working hours. You know? And then uh, afterwards, uh, you came home, and that was family time. And you, uh, you know, sat down with your family, had dinner. Maybe you did a phone call at night if you're someone like me with, with India or, 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 or Israel or something like that. But now I find it's really out of whack. I might have free time to do something personal for an hour in the middle of the day, but also all morning and all night now is also working hours. So you have to be really hard. And it's something 
I worry about for my team members is making sure that they can get that balance back. And the, the people that you would work with, the people that you would speak to, um, a lot of them are probably the, the resellers, the people you really depend upon for your sales channel uh, to be active. Um, how is the relationship with them maintained? What do, you, what do you see is really necessary? Is it a personal contact on your part? Um, do you have a team of people that are uh, dedicated to making sure the resellers get the kind of support that they need and the education they need? How does that work? So we have a huge team uh, that uh, works with our partners, with uh, their resellers, with distributors, and it, I think it makes us unique in the industry in that we have such a large presence to make sure that the resellers get hopefully everything they need. You know, it kind of starts with you know giving them all the the portals and the access so they can go search for information if they need it on demand, 24 hours a day. Um, it's backed up by an enormous amount of content certifications, technical certifications. Uh, you know, sales certifications, usage, uh, so that you know they know that the people they have on their team are, are certified. Their customers can take advantage of that, and then we have the people. And I think what I find all the time uh, when I ask the resellers. You know, why did they sell a fiery digital front end? Not the end customer, why did they buy it? But the reseller, really, why did they help sell it and position it? They always point to, you know, someone at EFI that says, you know, you have all this great material, but when I really have a question or I don't understand something, there's a phone number, a person I can call, and they're there for me and they answer. And, and I think that is a, a big differentiator for us. Well, that's, uh, that's interesting because I'm, I'm going to say that that's probably true with any industry, that if you get a response as a customer, from the people that you're dependent upon to run your business, um, th that's you know one of the one of the key things in valuing, adding value to the product uh, that you create. It, what's inter also interesting about you specifically is uh, you didn't come from a print background; you came from a technology background. Uh, talk to us about uh, the challenges that you faced in coming into um, what's you know an unusual field with unusual questions and daily challenges for what printers need to deal with. I have been in the print industry now for uh, 12 years and I still consider myself one of the least experienced people in almost every meeting uh, I go into. The depth of knowledge and history um, inside the print industry is enormous. Uh, prior to being in print, I was in technology. I was CEO of a security software company. Security goes extremely deep technically as well. Um, but one of the things that I really appreciate about the print industry is you're, we're, I'm dealing with people who want to solve business problems and they're not really mired in the technology. Oftentimes in security, I found I was dealing with a chief security officer and almost nothing was good enough for them. You know, perfect security doesn't exist and it was hard. In the print industry, it's really people who, you know, at the end of the day are business people trying to solve a problem and the technology has to serve their need. And so I found that one of the first refreshing things that, that I noticed in the industry. And everyone has always been super patient. They, they love hearing you know, about other industries and maybe applying a lesson, but at the same time, it's a welcoming industry that you know, I found you know, super neat. And, and it's challenging from a technical perspective and, and fun to learn about. You know, as uh, digital has really uh, come to uh, really uh, be a major player within the print industry and probably going to be uh, where things are. Um, I haven't been in a shop that doesn't have a fiery. Um, and that's from, from pretty small shops to you know, the, the biggest players that there are. Um, how do you see growth happening for the fiery? What is the expansion of, uh, of where you think the fiery technology can actually go? Uh, well, there are, there are some still that don't have a fiery Robert, so, uh, but uh, we're going to try to reach out to those as best as we can. Um, I guess I would disagree a little bit with what you said. Digital's definitely happening and going to be, or you, you had said probably. I mean, we're 100% certain about it because the benefits of digital print are enormous. Um, if you look at customers today, they're being challenged with how do they do short runs? How do they differentiate? How do they connect into you know, e-commerce? And digital's the perfect answer for that. So we see continued growth in digital. If you look at the print industry, still, by far, the majority of pages, uh, for example, are printed with offset. And I think in, we're going to see a dramatic shift in, in the next uh, uh, short, let's go short to medium term future, uh, as you know, digital is really a great answer. You look at the news right now, you know, you, 
you read the Wall Street Journal, you read Barron's, Inkish, uh, you know, you're reading about supply chain, yeah. you're, you're reading about, you know, um, staffing, you're reading about, uh, you know, just in time, uh, you're reading about the growth of e-commerce, and those are all things that digital is exceptional at helping customers with. And I, and I think uh, we're just going to continue to see more and more and more of that. So the growth for Fiery is going to come from the growth in digital uh, and how customers are, are really going that way. And is it strictly within the, the uh, print industry, graphics uh, industries where you see the Fiery being used or are there other um, areas where this technology might be useful that you're uh, possibly looking at? You don't have to reveal any super secrets, but we'd love to know what your vision is. If you look at Fiery, um, we see enormous amount of growth in many areas. Well, we define them as print, but it's a broad sense of print. It's really this ability to put an image on almost anything. And so it may be commercial print or graphics, but it's also industrial print, it's wide format. Uh, we have a growing and thriving business in building materials, that is inkjet printing on top of ceramic tiles digitally, textiles, uh, we're seeing great growth in the ability to print, you know, take a white sheet of fabric and on demand, uh, print new designs, soft signage, and then of course packaging is enormous. Almost all of packaging takes place in a very traditional sense, and people really want to move to digital packaging. And so whether it's corrugated or folding carton, Fiery has got a great place in those environments. And it takes all the lessons it learned over the last 30 years of how each of these fields gets digitized and applies them to these new industries. Yeah, that's fantastic. I think that there's, um, it's exciting to see where the technology has really grown to advance the, the print industry. Um, one of the things that's uh, that really challenging uh, the industry, I'm going back to people a little bit and who you get, how do you attract new people into your industry? Um, the, we know that a lot of the industry is aging out. Um, technology is one of the areas where it, the young people have been able to get into it. Um, how do you look at the, uh, the new generations to get them excited about what's going on in print? Yeah, it's a great question. I think that's uh, you know something that it, if you, you can't open the newspaper as well without reading about the great resignation right now. And I think that in particular is a very difficult thing for the print industry. Uh, you know, in the U.S. alone in September, four million people left their jobs, right? Not all of them from the print industry, uh, but a lot of them. And when I think about people in the print industry, they have long history of experience. So it's not so easy to just grab someone, uh, you know, straight out of college and dump them in. There is quite a bit of a learning curve, but at the same time, it's super exciting. It's going through a massive digital transformation. As I mentioned earlier, there's a tremendous amount to learn. People who are interested in graphics, people who are interested in technology, in programming, in creating what you know, end customers really want, it's super neat time to, to be there. What we've tried to do is help our customers sort of scratch off some of the objections people have to joining a company, right? How do you take away mundane work? Because guess what, in a labor shortage, no one wants to go and you know, move trays around, right? How do you automate? How do you let the people that you hire work on the neat stuff? Because that's gonna allow them to be interested in the work and be attracted to the companies and stay there. Uh, so things like that, I think, are very, very important. Yeah, well, they are very important. And I think, it, and as you say, in every industry, that this is a challenge that people are facing and uh, the changes that are there. There is, um, it, 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 one of the last things I want to talk to you about is the consolidation that's taking place in the industry. And um, I, I, some of this comes through the fact of uh, people who have chosen to be very innovative in what they're doing and have automated tremendously. Um, I, I, I like to point at Amazon um, that, you know, that they've uh, really have moved into different areas. There's also other areas in companies uh, like Canva who have taken a look at print and said, you know, it's not just design, there's actually the manufacturing component of it. So there's, there's shifts in what the industry has been, the mom and pop shop, the family owned industries. How do you see that affecting um, your, basically your cu customer base? I think one of the things that really changed during the pandemic is a giant shift to e-commerce. And, uh, you know, it used to be, yeah, I'll buy some things online, but there's some things I just won't buy online, like shoes or whatever. And, right. and we've reached the point where people buy everything online. 
And so that means you really have to differentiate your business now. Uh, so it's very easy for any consumer, and we all do this all the time, to shop online, right? We might go to Amazon a lot because they give you great delivery and have great prices. Uh, but if you think about a print business, but you know, not, there's only going to be one player who can be the price leader, right? Everyone else has to win business on something else. And I think that's really front in mind to center, is how can we help, and that's where we put our R&D investments, how can we help our customers differentiate? They could differentiate by you know, automating and maybe being a great provider of service. They can differentiate by you know, having low cost, by uh, removing waste. They can differentiate by taking advantage of new features in digital presses, for example. And I think that's really the home run. If you can differentiate because you have a new service uh, or you know, that you can offer before the, your competitors can, that's really the, the blue ocean, if you will, where you're going to get more value. I look at the fiery partners, the press manufacturers. They've really introduced a tremendous amount of in innovation. There's new colorants that are available. Uh, there's more than just CMYK. Uh, there's embellishments. There's finishing. And being able to offer all of that to your customer and sell it effectively, I think, really provides differentiation. And, and I think that's going to be key. This consolidation you mentioned, you know, is happening on many levels. Part of it is an equipment consolidation where there's been some overutilization or overcapacity, I should say, in the, in the industry. And so people are consolidating equipment, consolidating sites. We might see you know, consolidation in the, in the suppliers as well uh, side of things. So for me, front and center is you always have to differentiate. And that'd be the advice I would certainly give to my customers and try to take advantage of that. Yeah, and that certainly is important. So I'm just going to say that after speaking with you for this very short period of time, um, you know a heck of a lot about print and the nature of print and what, what the challenges are. Toby, I want to thank you for this conversation. I think it, uh, it's revealing and um, the customers of Fiery have a future that they can depend upon. Looks well, that way to me. <laughs> thank you so much, those are kind words. I'm really blessed to learn so much from our, from our partners and our customers and it was great having you at Connect. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, thanks.